Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are doing a dual broadcast for uh, the Bob and John Show and LandlordsJournal.com. So the fans of the Bob and John Show are also, hopefully, are also the fans of LandlordsJournal.com. Anyway, we're doing a dual broadcast. So anyway, um, I discovered a house um, the, uh, yesterday, actually, and we're driving in the car. I'm not driving. <laughs> But Bob's driving. I'm not driving. But um, I have to wrap this up because it's getting dark. But anyway, I found a house um, yesterday that I asked my broker about, um, and it's it's, on, it's in a very desirable neighborhood. You know, we're looking for nicer houses. We don't want to be slum lords. We want to look for nice houses, cheap in good areas, and so that's what I look for. And we want to buy them from people that are in distress and are hard up on their are hard on their luck. So that's always a good thing too. So we want nice houses from people who are hard up or are in bad shape or hard up, right Bob? That's our secret formula. We take advantage of people that uh, that are I'm sorry, never mind. Um, we don't do that. We don't take advantage of anyone. Very fair with everybody, but anyway, we want everything cheap. Of we course, we like. Out people, we want to help out. We want to help people. We're we we like to help people. We're genuinely helpful people, and we like to get people out of their problems. We're problem solvers. I like to consider myself a problem solver, right, Bob? And Bob's a problem solver. You're right. As well. You do like to consider yourself a problem solver. I, well, you know, so. <laughs> So I am a problem solver, and anyway, we like to get houses cheap, and a good way to get houses cheap or inexpensively or under market value is, and I don't know if that cut out or not, anyway, um, is to um, find places where uh, people are down on their luck, you know, in foreclosure, all that kind of stuff, you know, that's nothing there by myself. So anyway, I thought that I had found this in a house that's um, I'm familiar with the neighborhood, it's in a good neighborhood. But unfortunately, the neighborhood is, a lot of the houses are prone to have um, structural damage. And I was afraid that this one might have structural damage, and Bob always makes fun of me, don't you, Bob? When I say, you well, know... Well, the reason I do is because you started your structural damage issue, and you're making fun of me. <laughs> That's why. Because in the early days, I would mention something, and you would make fun of me. And then you went. You realized that I was right, and instead of saying that I'm right, you made it a joke. <laughs> but you have. To, I'm still concerned with structural damage, and you're concerned with structural damage as well. Is that correct, Bob? We are concerned with structural damage, right? If, I mean, uh, that's yeah. a problem in our area of West Virginia. Structural damage. A lot of houses have structural damage because they're most mostly built on hills. Right, and we have purchased. Houses or a house with structural well, I should say houses actually with structural damage, and as long as they capitalize in a reasonable amount of time, it doesn't necessarily have to be an issue. But anyway, that's a, for another uh, day. So anyway, I found this house, um, and I found out today that in fact it does have structural damage, and it is not um, owned by someone who is hard up or desperate for money that I know of. Um, the people had the the person who owns the house now purchased the house for uh, less than $20,000 and is trying to resell it for $50,000 um, with the structural damage, you know, you know, without it, corrected. without it corrected or anything. That's with the structural damage still um, there. So he's, you know, that's the asking price, of course. Um, and he's already rejected an offer for $40,000. So he rejected an offer. Um, to double his money, you know, I don't know what, I'm not sure he doesn't have anything in it. So what I'd like to get to the bottom of is how this guy purchased this house on, in a desirable area where the houses are selling for, you know, fifty to eighty thousand dollars, how he purchased it for twenty thousand dollars, and this is a nice house, I mean, um, I don't have a picture of it, I'd like maybe flash it up later, but I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you kind of, uh, you can follow me how I'm going to do my research on how I'm going to figure out how he purchased this house, what I think he did. So, following this, you're going to follow me 
and uh, on the websites that I'm going to use um, to figure out how he might have purchased this house for $20,000 and how we can do that and how maybe you can do it at home. So that's what we want to do, Bob. We want to buy houses for $20,000 and we want to um, sell them for fifty. dollars But personally, I would rather buy it for $20,000 I rent it for seven hundred a month, capitalize it, not fix, not not fix the um, structural issue immediately because it's rent, it's a rentable condition. It looks like from the outside. I haven't seen the inside, of course, but it looks like it's in rentable condition. I would rather take the um, the house, rent it, take my twenty thousand dollars, and refinance it because a lot of times the bank, you know, a lot of times the bank will not look at the inside. Um, we're still getting more experience with this, but it's possible. I'm not saying it's always the case, but it's possible that they would give you more than $20,000 for it. So that's what I would try to do with it first. Maybe he tried to do that and failed. I mean, he wants his money, he wants to make a quick, quick buck on it. I don't know. But I'm going to figure that after I get internet access at home and I can get all my programs at home. Do you have anything else to say, Bob? He agrees with everything I say. Right, Bob? So that's it for the Bob and John Show and LandlordsJournal.com. And be on the lookout for um, how I'm going to figure out how, how what I'm going to how I'm going to figure out how he purchased his house for twenty thousand dollars. That's my goal for this evening. Is how this guy got this house for twenty thousand dollars. And I'm, I'm suspecting that it was a foreclosure to begin with, and he got it as a foreclosure, and I'm thinking that's what I might discover. But I will do that in short order. So this is what I use to um, give me some insight or some hints on uh, what is going on with this property. And at the present time, I'm not sure what the address is, but I would go to maps.capitalassessor.com and see if the bank has um, taken possession of it, the last sales price, and all that kind of thing. Um, I can actually find the address here. Um, I would go to um, to here, and most of uh, most of the counties in the United States and most of the states um, have this information online. So you might want to uh, check <coughs> um, with your and call your local county. You can call your county courthouse. Um, this saves a lot of time from having to go to the courthouse. Um, and I'm going to try to look for the, um, the map viewer and kind of find out uh, what the address is on this house. Um, this wasn't coming up earlier. Um, I do know that the house was on um, Crestmont Drive. And using this tool, um, I can get an idea of what the... Um, There's in here. What the... Uh, what the... Um, the address is. So I'm going to type in, I'm going to type the address in. Get this locate address. I'm to, actually, I'm going to type in the, the, get a list of the addresses on the street and I'll pull up the, um, the, uh, and sometimes you have to be careful on um, putting the drive, sometimes it wants a DR, sometimes it wants you to spell it out. So a lot of uh, counties in different states use this system. So it's searching. Yeah, I'm not, it looks like it found, okay, let's see. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to be able to do this on this video, but using the tools at your uh, that from your cab from your um, county, you should be able to pull up the address, and it will give you some clues on um, what's going on with the property. Um, using this tool that I showed you earlier um, back here, um, you would be able to uh, point out the uh, last sales price, the sales of the property. Um, who owns it now, how much they paid for it, and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of times there's a lag on it. Um, you know, sometimes they, they're slow on putting the information into the, in, into the system. So if it's something real recent, you might want to, you might need to go down to, physically go down to the courthouse because it won't be online. So if it's time sensitive, you might want to have to make a trip down to the courthouse 
um, no matter what state or state or county you're in. So hopefully um, I can get that working next time, but for now um, I'm not getting it to work. And so that's all for today. Use the to the online tools that your county gives you. Um, you can get some insight on. Uh,